Holy cannolis. Hello, everybody. Oh, my God. Not only am I on time, I am a teeny tiny bit early. How unusual. Poor moi. Um, guys, today has been a day. It's been 14 days. But we have so much to go over. Okay? And my wife has put me on a strict time constraint. I've put myself on a strict time constraint tonight, guys, because I, I ramble. And we have a lot to go over. So let's dive into it. How did we get here? And why are we talking about Mitch Brisker? So <clears throat> we're going to dive in. We're going to get into it. Um, it's a lot of stuff. So um, let's just, Mitch was the director of Scientology Films starting in the 90s. Um, he was in Scientology for 28 years. And then he left. That's that's what I personally know about Mitch Brisker. I never, as far as I know, interacted with him, um, you know, because I was just a word clear at Celebrity Center, a, a, a literal nobody. And, um, you know, Mitch um, fashions himself um, a very important person um, in the film world, in Scientology world, um, you know, uh, all these things. Now he, he got into, um, you know, Scientology, um, much the same way a lot of people in his, um, <clears throat> kind of his ilk do, which is, you know, um, via the arts, he became a true believer and, um, you know, all that other stuff. And, um, you know, it went from there. They love bombed him. They took him up to gold. They told him what a great artist he was. And then, you know, um, he, uh, you know, fell for it. Hook, line, and sinker. Now, I, I'll be honest with you. Um, I, I tried, you know, because he was supposedly, um, and, I, and I'm looking again just to make sure that's what you hear is the furious typing of, of me here. And, and I'm, I'm trying to see like where his IMDb is, you know, like what made him so interesting to Scientology and why, and like, I, I don't, I, I don't find anything like, I'll be honest. Um, so, um, yeah, I don't know. Um, so, well, I have one dog whining next to me. Apologies. Um, <clears throat> so it, it doesn't really make sense. So that part of his story, I don't know. It doesn't really matter. So let's let's get into the sharesies here. Oh no, that's the wrong button. I don't need that button. Please, please pardon my. We're gonna share my screen. One second. Okay, Charlie, go on. Okay. Right. Sorry, guys, my puppy got stuck in here with me, and she doesn't want to be in here with me. All right. <clears throat> so the first thing that I have so many tabs to, uh, let's just, let's just share my entire screen here and then I can go through everything. Um, okay. Share that. Oh, that, that, this is very, this is like, we're in the matrix guys. We're in the matrix. How about that? Nope. That I have to change this. What is happening? Oh my goodness. What is going on? Let's see here. How did that? Wow. It's like I'm talking to 10,000 of myself. It is inception. This is not what I wanted to do. Good Lord stream. This is just a mess. Why can't I? 
I want to share that. Okay, now it's letting me. It's a little bit better. All right. So, ba -bum, ba -bum, ba -bum. where did all that go? Now I lost you. My screen is normally not this messy, guys. Okay. So, we're going to pop that back in here. Okay. So, first, these are all the messages that Marilyn got. So, you guys may recall that the, oh, this is terrible. I can't show you guys that screen. All right. So the night that um, <clears throat> Mitch, that Aaron got freed from the jail, right? Mitch just showed up outside the test center after, you know, Aaron got free and there was kind of like a, a big celebration and a party going on, right? So. Um, this is, this is part of, I, I clipped a couple moments from, from that evening. And I, I want to share these moments with you because it's very important to just show Mitch. It, it, he does title this video on his channel, shamelessly hawking my book on Hollywood Boulevard. Okay. So it's that there's no uh, getting around what he was actually doing. Okay. So one side, if we rewind this really quick here, right? The one side is kind of like, um, you know, rated C for cult, public warning. And it, it kind of looks like it could be like this cool bumper sticker, right? And then he tells her, flip it over, right? And now we find out, oh, just kidding. It's a promo for his book. So he's he's at this celebration of, you know, Aaron getting out of jail and no charges, et cetera, et cetera, and shows up to hand out these things that are like the most Scientology inspired promo that I've ever seen. OK. Okay. Right. Okay. So that's, that's number one. Then, um, later on, I have all these things here. Sorry. Later on, he talks to these two people. I'm going to flip back to that couple in a second. Later on, he talks to these two people because he just, he only like actually interacts with a couple people because most of the people don't know who he is and they don't really want to talk to him. But this little segment where he is he asks where these people like why they're here and earlier in the conversation they told him that they had been part of anonymous okay so then what does mitch do this is what he tells them He just critiqued his own work. He was making videos that look like bad trailers for The Matrix. Right there. Do you see how, like, their entire body language changes um, when he tells them that the PIs did things to people? Like, they are not... Oh, you guys couldn't hear any of that? Nobody could hear it. It's muted. Did you, I couldn't see the chat. Did you guys hear the other one? Or did you hear the first one? No, you didn't hear... Oh, my God. I'm talking to myself. Hang on one second. Good gravy. Let me just stop sharing that so that everybody can stop seeing me in the matrix. I pulled up all these clips, guys, and then nobody can hear it. All right. Yes to the first clip? No. Neither. Nothing. Okay. 
<laughs> I love live television, guys. That's what this is. And that's okay. And I will figure it out. So one secundo. Uh, is this the one I need? That's not the one I need. No. All right. So let's try this again. And let's try just sharing that one tabity tab. Here we go. Can you guys all see that when I go there? Now we can. Yes. Okay. I'm going to try playing it. Here we go. So did you guys see that and hear that at that time or still no sound? Nothing again. This is very frustrating. How about when I go here? Do you guys see it? Can I have one of those? Nice. Flip it over. There you go. My public apologies on the back. Can I have one of those? That time, did you hear it? Now you heard it, but you can't see it. Oh my God. Now you can see it. All right. Let's try one more time for the people. In the nice. Flip it over. There you go. My public apologies on the back. How about then? Hearing, seeing, nothing? Yes. Okay. All right, so there was oh, there was that one, and then let me find the the other couple here. Where did you go? This couple, boom, and we'll just go back to the beginning here. Here we go. Because the original guys who started it on this, they never went out on the streets. They started it as a joke. And they didn't realize it was a prank. They didn't realize how many people hate us on Thursday. So they like lived this forest on fire. And it was pretty crazy. I was making like videos that looked like um, you know bad trailers for you know the, the matrix. And, like, it, it was crazy. It was like Yeah, they did some really nasty shit. Did you guys see them like look at each other when he was like critiquing? his his like own videos like they were like oh that doesn't sound good anyway oh my goodness PIs on people you know they would like lie to the cops about their security people would lie to the cops about the anonymous guys were doing to get the cops to take to get them to take their masks off so they could get their identity they were doing all things so they should because the original guys who started it on this this lady for the whole thing is so disinterested she's so like yeah. Um, so just to go back to this couple here who he started interacting with and gave her first the girl his um, his little promo thing. Right. Then the guy she's with asked the million dollar question. OK. Like, what was, like, the last straw for you? Um, the last straw for me was they just wouldn't pay me enough money anymore. So I broke up with them. No, 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 no. I'm just kidding. 
Did you guys hear that? I'm going to I'm going to turn on the captions. I'm going to rewind it. Just so we can all hear that again. It was they just wouldn't pay me enough money anymore. So I broke up with them. No, 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 no. I'm just kidding. The last straw. I was like, what? That's yeah. a bad answer. Yeah, because I'm not a good person. I'm a bad person. <laughs> uh, no, it was uh the last I'm not a good person. I'm a bad person. But wait, let's see what he actually says for his I answer. Like no, they paid me. Yeah, they paid me a lot of money. It's like, I thought they just give you housing. No, but I worked for them. And, and so I got all my Scientology for free. Yeah, but were you in the ARC? Sea ARC? No. So you got to go check my story out. Yeah. I worked closely with David Miscavige for 30 years, but I was never in the Sea ARC. Oh, okay. like, like what was like the last straw? Yeah. He worked closely with David Miscavige for 30 years, but he was never in the Sea Org. I really, I really want you guys to hone in on that. Okay. 30 years, never in the Sea Org, got paid lots of money. Now, I, I searched through his videos and I, I'll be honest, I didn't watch every single one of them. I did spend a lot of time uh listening to Mitch today. And I could not find him say anywhere what the real reason was that he left. Other than right here. But he never goes back and answers this kid. Then this kid is like, can you give me your number? I'd love to talk to you. And he almost gave him his number. He just kept giving him his, I'll give you my website address. Like, bro, bro, it's not the 90s anymore. No one says website address. But anyway, yeah. So <clears throat> I have a couple more clippy clips here. I know this is a lot of clips, guys, but I, I just wanted to bring up these things here. So then um, we watched that one. Um, so then today, literally today, he does a live stream with Mark. And they brought on uh, this former Scientology actor, Alan Barton, who has also taken over um, the... Uh, now I can't remember the name of it. They talked about it like exclusively throughout this video. What used to be run by Milton Casalis, the um, the acting studio where all these Scientology actors used to get like pipelined into Celebrity Center and everything, right? And um, so they literally like it was just like a, a love fest. Between the three of the Beverly Hills Playhouse. Thank you, Peter Anderson. Thank you very much. And um, <clears throat> it was a very big recruitment center. I mean, uh, Milton Casalis was a big time Scientologist. He was friends with Alron, um, you know, and um, he, you know, uh, brought a lot of people into Scientology. He was also, prior to being a Scientologist, was considered one of the biggest acting coaches in all of Hollywood, right? So he was like a legit guy. Um, Alan Barton has now taken over the Beverly Hills Playhouse. He was one of his premier students, um, you know, and he was helping run the Beverly Hills Playhouse also for a very long time. And he talked about, you know, his time in Scientology, but mostly it was the three of them just like, oh, I had a great time and everything was great. And like, I love the snacks and like, I like chips and salsa and like, like, all right. Um, so uh, let me just share with you this, this one clip. Um, from today and um, he here we go let me let me pull this up here let me I need to do something else here one second oh, let me let me get this there we go here we go Yeah, let's play it. We, we, were, were, no, pet we were David Miscavige's pet project. So, yeah, yeah that's that's I definitely the vibe call, I got. Yeah, yeah, because I didn't call anybody from CMO Ant or RTC, sir. I wasn't expected to. I never, I yeah. didn't even call Miscavige, sir. Uh, yeah. because it, it made me feel uncomfortable. I'm like, why am I calling this guy, sir? It's like weird. You know, yeah. I, I, it's like whatever. So, but whatever. But I think that's. It, yeah, but it is very much outside. Once you sit outside the castle, that's the like. That's like uh, you're at Harvard, and then you, that's the janitorial department. Is, I didn't have the, no, I didn't call the janitorial department. 
is the rest of gold, guys. And being inside the place where they shot the films, that's Harvard. Mark was a part of Harvard. Alan, the other guy down there, was just basically like a, you know, a public person. He was an actor. He was brought in occasionally. And and Mitch was getting paid millions of dollars to create the propaganda and, you know, doing everything else, right? So why are we talking uh, talking about Mitch? Well, Mitch is is doing the same tactics, the same OSA playbook that, you know, we've been talking about. Now, let me see if I can pull up. That's not what I want. That's my doctor's report. That's not for you guys. Um, healthcare is important, guys, but that's not what we're doing right now. Um, there we go. Let me see if I can share this one. So, stop that one. And let's share this other one. Here, let me, I wanted to do one other thing, though. And some, it's not letting me do it from StreamYard. I think I have to do it from the actual YouTube app. Maybe I can. Maybe I can't. I don't know. I see you in here, Summer. Oh, I'm talking to myself on the app now. Where are you? Summer in the chat. There you are. Bingo. Okay. I just I just handed you a wrench, Summer. There we go. All right. <clears throat> now we'll we'll have some order, ladies and gentlemen. Um, thank you, Liz, for jumping in here. All right. So let's see if I can share this other screeny screen. Yes. Oh, I love it. Yay. All right. Can you guys see this now? Are you seeing? Can you see what I see? Are you seeing that? The browser can't access your screen. Try capturing a different screen if this continues. Why? <laughs> Why are you being so mean to me? It says it will do it, and then it says no. No, it's not going to let me do it. Okay. Anyway, I have another OSA network file. I'll post it again in the community thing. This is OSA network order number 10. Um, from Office of Special Affairs. It's very short. So it's called Enemy Mistakes. All right. Um, you always make an enemy make mistakes. One of the ways you do this is hit his morale, unstabilize him, make him frantic. And at that moment, he will start to make mistakes. And then you just mop him up. That is a method of prosecuting a war particularly with an overwhelmingly huge enemy from L. Ron Hubbard, the founder. Um, that is what certain people are trying to do wittingly or unwittingly. Um, the, the fact that Mitch positioned himself at the lunch table with David Miscavige and considers that that gives him the gravitas and the wherewithal to decide that he knows everything about everybody is redonkulous because he was himself a celebrity. He was being treated as such and he was being told what he needed to hear in order for him to be comfortable to keep doing exactly what David Miscavige wanted him to do. And in order for him to continue uh, to make these ridiculous propaganda films for uh, Scientology. Okay. So 
Uh, now, some of you, I'm going to share one other thing. Um, and this is my community post from a couple days ago. Okay. Um, where I did. Um, there we go. Share that. So this is my community post. And I'm not going to read the whole thing. But at the very top, I said, how many nicknames can I get in one week? Now, I, along with many other esteemed others, have been dubbed flying monkeys by the academic, I put that in gigantic air quotes, Chris Shelton, right? And then I posted his, his rantings, right? He did use the term flying monkeys. And then when I was doing the research today on Mitch, it, it, some of the stuff that I, you know, I was going to pull some quotes here. It, it was really interesting to me that one of his videos um, here is titled, I was Scientology's flying monkey. Like what? No, I, I do understand the reference to the wizard of Oz. Um, and you know, all of those other things. Um, but like, wow, this mindset really, really runs deep. And then on top of everything else, Mitch has decided to insert himself into the discussion by private messaging of all people, Marilyn Honing. Okay. Um, and I don't know why um, he's decided to do this. Now, he's individually messaged uh, myself, various other second gens to, you know, do very light love bombing along the way, loving your content, we should collab, all this other kind of stuff. But these messages to Marilyn, you see all these little tabs at the bottom of the screen here? These are all the messages that he sent her, okay, over the past bit, just attacking her as if somehow going after Marilyn is going to cause all of the second gens, all of the people that are speaking out, we're all just going to crumble, okay? Because look, look what, look what they've done to sweet, innocent Marilyn. Oh, we must stop. We must cease and desist from this shenanigans that we've been at. And we must all collapse and just stop. We must stop our our truth telling because look it's going to happen to us like this is just it, it, first of all Marilyn's a grown ass woman she's a cult survivor she's a second gen in a cult and she has scapade with her children she is a tough tough woman but people keep trying to come for her to get at us she came to SPTV and started talking with second gen people because she felt a kinship with us in that every cult is very similar. Okay. I love cult stories. I've watched the Nixum stuff uh, or Nixium. However you say that I'm watching daughters of the cult. I've seen like every cult documentary that comes out. I'm like, what is this about? And like, I'll joke with my wife. Like, Oh, pff, Oh, that's all they did. Like, Mer. you know, like I, I privately joke about that. That's, you know, Obviously, everybody's trauma is horrific. All these cults are horrific. And there are things that are so similar. And so I can see that. And it makes me be able to deal with my own trauma in a way where I can go, number one, I'm not the only person who experienced horrific trauma at the hands of a, a narcissistic, megalomaniac, you know, cult leader. That's number one. Number two, there are other survivors. There are other people who are experiencing the same pain and the same, you know, uh, CPTSD, depression, um, you know, anxiety, the other things that I deal with on, on, a, on a daily basis, right, that, uh, that I work through, right? So seeing that helps me to not feel alone, to feel understood, to feel seen. Right. And, and, and not to speak for Marilyn, but, you know, like I feel that with her. So I also feel in, in, in some ways very protective of her. Right. So when I see messages like this, you know, uh, coming at her and I'm just going to I'm going to scroll through these guys. OK. Um, 
you know, we're in a community of like-minded individuals. And when we sling mud at one another, it's infighting. This this term infighting, I'm really over it, okay? Uh, infighting for me, you know, sometimes, like I've said before, there are hard truths that are going to come out in the ex-Scientology community. And we need to deal with those hard truths head on, okay? We need to deal with them head on in a big boy, big girl panty moment, okay? And, and we need to understand that this is a cult. We were all in it. Some of us had bigger responsibilities, bigger, um, you know, uh, impacts across the globe, Mitch included. And, and we need to realize what our roles were and start talking about that in a responsible way. Just sitting here, Mitch, and stroking your ego and talking about how you were besties with Miscavige and like life was peachy keen. Like that's a bunch of bullshit. Okay. That's a bunch of BS. It doesn't do anything to get rid of their 501c3 status. It doesn't do anything to get the children out of there. Like literally you went through one video, this flying monkey video, guys, Watch that video. Watch the 30 minutes. It's not, it's actually not painful to watch. Watch the 30 minute video. Watch him break down how close he was shooting that video to the hole and just talk about it so casually. Like you fucking knew those people were in the hole and you just sat there making your poshy posh little film. Like shame on you. Shame on you. You knew people were literally being held captive against their will. And you were cashing your check. Cashing your check. Because that was okay with you because it wasn't you in the hole, was it, Mitch? Was it? Okay. So let's let's go through these grotesque messages here. So, you know, it's a lot of stuff. That's the beauty of most people have the wrong definition of anarchism. Like it's just like mansplaining 101. Um Oops, I didn't, oh, I'm in Italy. So now I got to go back to the beginning. No, it keeps going to all my messages. I mean, you guys know who all my friends are. Like, oh my God, it's Facebook, I'm never on there. All right, so I'll just click this way. So the, and then these are Marilyn's answers back, right? I'm not accusing you of doing anything wrong. Just a suggestion, use a little discretion. Discretion. We're all in this together, right? Let's do it again this coming week. Big hug, right? Because they had been on a live together. And then she's he's like giving her a bunch of shit after it, right? Um, I'm doing my best, best to do what I think it's right. You know, I, I, I think you're doing great. You're one of the good guys for sure, right? And then, you know, then she's trying to like ask him what she did wrong, right? Like, don't don't ever ask a narcissist what you did wrong. Oh, no. This is what you get back. I chatted with Alex about his rudeness to you. I think he gets it. When Sterling criticized Serge's narrative about the hotels, I jumped all over him for not respecting Serge's story. <laughs> he totally understood. I just think it's not our times. Better spent focusing on our true blah, 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 blah. I'm not, you know. And so they're going back and forth. It's a lot of stuff. A number of viewers mistook your frankness as an attack on me. Nothing could be further from the truth. It's like all this stuff. It's like he's always over explaining, right? All these things. So then they're just going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And then it starts getting like weirdly escalated. He just keeps giving her this friendly advice that she's not asking for. And then um, making all your, this is February 9th. So we're getting closer to like now. Um, making all your content focused on the community itself and not on the mission to bring down Scientology. You're actually getting in the way. Somehow he's in charge now. No one told me of us finding common ground we all need to be standing on. I'm asking you to please think about this and cease being an agent of amplification for those who wish to exploit the fissures in this community, right? Um, da -da -da. Please think deeply about this. Mike Rinder and the aftermath are not your enemy. What Mike said in his blog post is 100% true. I know this for a fact. 
not a rumor. I witnessed Mike as a spokesman and a miscavige victim. I was a witness. I was in the room many times. Miscavige ran OSA, not Mike. Not true. Not true. If he gave a shit, he would be laughing at you for blaming Mike. This community needs to heal. Well, the laughing at, at us for blaming Mike for everything, that might give, you know, David Miscavige a cackle. That's true because, you know, then we're not talking about his him and his tiny feet. Um, it is not, it is about unity, not egos. From the, uh, bu -bu -bu -bum. from the title of your upcoming stream, I can deduce you intend to continue to amplify the false narrative about Mike and the Aftermath Foundation. Please don't. There's a lot you don't know about the players. Who are the players, Mitch? I can't put it in writing, but I will discuss it with you. I have secrets. Only I know, and I can protect you. Um, please don't take this the wrong way, but you have proven to be influenced by negative comments, which is why you won't publicly associate with me. That is your right, and I didn't take it personally. Um, if you're going to read out loud, please read it in its entirety, but I'm sorry, Marilyn. In my view, you swapped out one hateful cult for another. You're not in the cult of SPTV. Did I skip something? Ba -ba. But making your channel about those who supposedly do uh, with what to whom in the community is damaging the movement. You are helping a few people who want to exploit fissures for their own purposes. Okay. And then, um, you know, um, so then she asks, is he asking us these things? Mike Brown, Nora, Liz G, uh, Liz Ferris are, you know, are the ones that are talking about this. Are you blowing up their inboxes too? No, no. Uh, concern with, uh, that's a joke. They are looking for blood, not the truth. Hmm. Okay, Mitch. Um, you're the only one I messaged. Why is that? Why are you messaging the only person who's who's not a Scientologist? Like, I don't I don't understand that. That doesn't even make any sense that he would do that. Um, you know, she's like, then do your own live whatever. Um, I won't do such a live because I have no intention of fanning the dumpster fire and the toxic YouTube space. Take care. Okay. So then that should be, you know, she, she you know, um, just defend the people who call victims names. Take care. So Marilyn like punches back a little bit. Um, you know, she says, I don't name call. I don't go on YouTube and impugn people's character. Um, you know, it wasn't to shut you up as meant to get you to dial down the rhetoric rather than carry it forward. Um, you know, she gets back to him about that. Let's be adults and admit we both made mistakes. I got a bit hot headed because Mike, Mark and Claire have been my friends for 30 years. They're good people. Blah, 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 blah. It was likely, you know, uh, <clears throat> now here's here's where we get this. I am certain Mike was threatened by Miriam not accepting his answer about the affidavit, which was likely a fiction made up by Aftermath producers to make good TV. When he wasn't able to help her to her satisfaction, she started attacking him. She is a victim and deserves support. Something is feeding her trauma. I suspect it's Jamie Mustard. Oh, we got a new SP in town who's on a campaign to get the Aftermath Foundation to pay for ex-Scientologists to receive his non-FDA approved treatment in which he's a financial stake. Oh, somebody's making money. It's not Mitch. I don't know exactly what's going on. Anyway, thanks for being an adult about this. Good luck. And let me apologize for being too forthcoming with my advice, um, which you never asked for. And then she says, apology accepted. Um, you know, and they could have just told her. It's my understanding she asked them to pay for special treatment for PTSD and they turned her down because they had to pay directly for non-approved therapy. It's a huge legal deal. Blah, 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 blah. And then she brings up the liability form. Um, then he just says that's part of their bad communication. Um, I don't think Jamie's trying to destroy Mike Rainer so he can get the aftermath cash. I spoke with him for an hour uh, on a phone call. He's pretty clear. Jamie's always been known as a hustler. More dead agenting about Jamie. Um, I have no dealings with him. I'm not trying to destroy him. All it'll all shake out in the meantime. I'll keep my advice to myself. This is the third time now that he said he's going to keep his advice to himself. So now Marilyn's like, um, all first statements read Headley. He's my friend, blah, 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 a, a bit of a barbarian. Wow. That's, that's how I describe all my friends too. That's, that's how I do that. 
Um, you know, and then it's just like they can go fight Scientology people and let people who are compassionate and trauma informed run it. This is great advice for Marilyn. And this is who should be running the Aftermath Foundation. It should be who who should be running any ex cult recovery foundation, trauma informed people, period. Marilyn, this is going to be a, a hard pill to swallow, perhaps, but both of these things can be true. Um, not trying to silence you. I'm just asking you to that you use some discretion. Like, first of all, Mitch, you're not in charge, you know, about her brand, right? So now she's getting pissed. Then she says, please leave me alone. And instead, um, th this is another post from her. And then I guess this is his response. Uh, you know, that's the claim, not the reality. I never tried to silence Meriton. I, I, I asked her to cooperate with me in toning down the rhetoric, showing some grace to all the victims. But, you know, you know, uh, it did make for some spicy content. Um, I insulted some people. I've publicly apologized and I'm suffering the attacks. Um. Yeah, where can you where can I find this apology? Yeah, me, I, I'd like to find that too. Um, yeah, so uh, these messages, as as y'all can see, are are uh, they're all over the place. They're just you know, yeah. So in regards to Jamie Mustard and his therapy and everything else. That's a whole other bag of chips. Jamie Mustard's going to Jamie Mustard. And this therapy is possibly some of the stuff that Mike Brown touched on that they have been doing with military service people for a number of years. Okay. So it's not something like that Jamie Mustard just invented. Okay. This is like doctors doing it and stuff like that. Um, but Mitch is just being like a continual agent for David Miscavige, like trying to be up here, and also Mike Rinder for some odd reason. Like just because you're friends or you've known somebody or you made some movies with them and stuff. Like Mitch, if you have, this is the same message I said to Mike and to Mark and Claire. Like y'all have information. You have receipts. Start using that information in a publicly responsible fashion to benefit the survivors of Scientology and to get their 501c3 status annihilated and to get kids out of Scientology. That is what we need to be doing. These like, let's get together and have story hours. Go do that at the pub. Go have story hour with your homies. Reminisce. That is not for the internets right now. That is not what we're doing. Okay. But guys, just to back up what I'm saying, to back up the seriousness of, of this, uh, Mitch is not homeless. Who's saying that? That's crazy sauce. Um, uh, he's definitely not, he's definitely not homeless. Uh, he's yeah. I, if he is, then reach out, Mitch, let's, let's help you out. Okay. But I, I want to bring in a very special guest guys. Um, this is a surprise for all of you guys. I have my very good friend, the one and only uh, Mr. Serge. Serge, welcome. Hello. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, Serge, to the show. Uh, if you guys missed Serge's live from earlier today, uh, where, you know, once again, literally confronting uh, evil in its uh, pure human form, wearing a skin mask, uh, the RTC lawyer. Good job. Robert E. Mangle. Yes, Robert E. Mangle. Um, you know, uh, that's this this is what the fight is about. It's like Mitch shows up to a protest and doesn't protest, but promotes himself. And all of these guys sit back here and talk about, you know, oh, everybody's just trying to make a buck. Everybody's just trying to do this, that, and the other thing. The protests confronting the lawyers getting out in public and doing this stuff has effectively shut down the number one recruitment office in all of Scientology in the whole world, guys. They're, sh they're shut down. Like, it's, um, it, I, that's something like, when we were in this year, that's something we would have never thought of, like, happening. 
like mm-hmm. that no body routing was happening on Hollywood Boulevard. Like what? Like yeah. if they see people with cameras, like just holding up their cell phone coming towards, they are shutting every window. They are closing every door. They are like in terror of just random people. Not even just like me and Serge. Like that's that's terror times a, a bajillion. But just random. Oh, what's you know? It could just be a tourist. Like oh, it's a church. <laughs> like, you know, just trying to get a selfie. You know, they think everyone <clears throat> is now like a YouTuber. You know, that's like coming to get them. That's gonna live stream. You know everything. It it is amazing to me what is happening every night out there at, mm-hmm. at every base in Los Angeles, and it's starting to spread across the country. It's it's phenomenal. It's phenomenal. No, absolutely. Um, and the thing is, Nora, is they cannot take questions because they cannot take a shred of scrutiny. And that's the problem. That's why we're no. so trying to sound the alarm because there is no transparency where they cannot even answer any questions with a straight face to people that are on the outside, right? Because you have to be in, you have to be groomed, you have to be approved. Right. And in what world, you know, is is that a 501c? First of all, 501c's are supposed to help the general public. You know, yesterday I just published like this phone call that got leaked where they talk about, oh, we, we closed down the guest list. We really did close that down because you didn't answer us. And it's like, okay, what 501c? is running a guest guest list that's also a hotel and a church and it's like there is they they have nothing other than this hoity toitiness that comes from <clears throat> nowhere because it's not you know they 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 want to be respected but they don't understand that respect is earned you don't just go pull pushing your weight around and telling people I'm so important cuz Tom Cruise is part of my buddies in my hotel I mean, yeah, that's where we are. That's literally where we are. And and it's just inconceivable that, you know, Mitch, who had a lot to say apparently about me so-called snubbing him, it's like we have the right to not speak to anyone we don't want to speak to. It's called boundaries. It's called we've already smelled a rat with you. It's called if you really wanted to have done something in that protest, you could have taken it on after I was done speaking and decided to say, hey guys, I'm one of those parents. I did this. What he's saying is exactly right. We are a bunch of dead beat out of our literal mind. But they can't, they cannot help themselves, right? Like that would be a shock. That would be a shock to me. That would be a shock to you. That would actually make breaking news. As I was standing outside this courtroom, there's no yes. parent out there. There's not a single no. Scientology parent why would, out there. Why would they show you. up? Why would they show up? I mean, the the you know, I mean, they 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 couldn't surge. They being talked to by you and like trying to absorb the information download of what occurred for us as children and things like that. I mean, like I've been, you know, talking to my own mother who I got out and, you know, trying to get her to understand certain things and, um, you know, uh, that kind of stuff. And it's been a lot of back and forth because she has her version of history and, you know, it's, it's always multiple viewpoints, right? It's my experience versus what she remembers. And it's a, you know, she said, she said in this case kind of a thing. And, um, It gets to be, uh, you know, super emotional, super upsetting. And so sometimes I just have to like not. But I will say this, like early on, things that broke my mom was like when she would see the cadets come in from the ranch and they were dressed in those little red shirts and the khaki pants Mm -hmm. and they would muster up. And one time somebody asked them for some reason in the middle of the ash. So this this memory has stuck with her for 30 years. And they asked her in the middle of um, 
you know, the, the, the kids must drop and they were like, you know, attention. And they were doing the whole thing. And then the, the unit I see was like, does anyone here miss their parents? And the kids were like, no, like, you know, like in unison. And that like destroyed my mom on the inside that they were like getting these kids to Chinese school, not giving a shit about their own parents. Right. And like, she started crying and like her, even when she'll remember that story, and tell it, 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 it makes her ball because like she in that moment realized that it wasn't just like the parents, like she used to get mad, like seeing people who she knew had kids. She'd be like, well, that guy's a fucking asshole. He's not, you know, taking care of his kid. But then seeing the opposite end of it where the kids were also being programmed to just be like, well, you don't miss your parents or you're out ethics. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, that really like broke her. And I, and I asked her one time, I'm like, why didn't you just leave? Why would you want to be a part of a group that would do that? Right? Like, well, why? unfortunately, they were it, getting something out of it. They were getting she, something out of it. It's like people who cherry pick the Bible. Do you know what I mean? Like they have their favorite quotes. Everybody loves that quote. Love is patient. Love is kind. You know, like that whole thing that everyone gets at their wedding. That's, no, the, but, that's the problem with these people. It's like they right. don't have that benefit of the doubt because Elwin Hubbard's rhetoric was applied as a technology and it breaks mm -hmm. my heart to mm -hmm. hear that the conversations with your mom still cannot have a shred of honesty or transparency. And I'm sorry to literally put her in her place. They know time plays for an event. Elwin mm -hmm. Hubbard did teach them that. They do know right from wrong. Even though they were all warped up in their own delusions of grandeur, which is what screwed them and is what gives them no plausible deniability. This wasn't the Bible. This wasn't, oh, let's interpret what it says here. But, you know, it's, right. it said, lock us up against our will and don't let us out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's what the auditor's code oh, said. Yeah. So it's not he said, she said, right? It's like, that's no. still them trying to gaslight you and be like, oh, no, you have a different memory about this or that. And it's like, no, I have the policy to say I was locked against my will for hours on end. You liked it. You got off on it. You loved mm -hmm. it. You wrote great success stories. You consented to something that you could have consented to. We're not here to question that. We don't give an yeah. F. I'm not here to, well, did you like it? Did you not like it? Why do we care? Why? Why was we that don't, our problem? And and that's and that's the point. Like we've come, we've we've evolved past the like. Let's tell the stories. Like I I was saying this today to a friend of mine, um, who he he hasn't shared his story online. I would love to bring him on the channel. I'm trying to get him to come down to LA the weekend I'm coming because he lives up here in the Pacific Northwest also. Because mm. let's face it, search there are thousands of us second gens um, out here who have been in the Sea Org for a stint or on staff and left, survived somehow um, to, to tell our stories. Right. And, and, and what I said to him was, was two things. Um, you know, uh, there are so many of us that don't speak out right? For, for various different reasons. Um, some of us are still in, very tenuous relationships with people who are still very much in the church who have mm -hmm. relationships with ex-spouses and kids are involved in things so that like lips are zipped, right? Because they don't want to lose custody of children. That I totally understand because I don't want people to lose custody of children. That's like, forget about it. Um, the other thing is, is that sometimes people are so traumatized, they cannot find that inner lion that inner tiger to come out and talk. And, and as you and I both know, the most important thing uh, on this journey is the therapy, which we were all programmed to think is evil and is going to do us in and is going to, you know, we're all going to get lobotomized the first time we set foot in a psychiatrist's office. They're just going to pull out the ice picks and shove them in our eyeballs and then scramble our whole brain. And that's it. Of course, that doesn't happen. Um, but, uh, you know, when you haven't done the work and you haven't been brave enough to, to set foot in a therapist's office and start on that very hard journey of looking inward, dealing with the trauma, um, with somebody who really knows what they're doing, yeah. it, it makes this, what we're doing impossible, 
right? Because well, then you just want to talk about the story. Right? I don't know. I don't know you if know. it's brave, Nora, but it it is. We've been put in an untenable position, right? Because all the therapy we were given resulted in such betrayal mm -hmm. that in order to be able to trust anyone else with anything, since all the data was weaponized against mm -hmm. us, you know, and I speak to that. I was an auditor at age 12. I know the inner workings of these disgusting, yes. depraved role plays. That's why yes. I'm disgusted now. And the aftermath of it all, I couldn't be more nauseated and disgusted. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's like we understand that you don't want to go to therapy. It, it brave for us to get there. It we know how hard it was to go there. I mean, yeah. and we were desperate because there was not a lot of options on the table anymore. You know, and I know yeah. we've spoken about this ourselves. Yeah. That yes, you know, by the time they're done with you, you just want out. Out. Yeah. Like that's how you quell your emotions of this betrayal, unthinkable betrayal that happened at so many layers. And it's just like, how could my parents have put me in harm's way full knowing they had the book. It told them to lock up their child. It taught yeah. them to put him in untenable power dynamics that are indefensible. Like, you know, now as a parent, and I'm so proud of all of you parents, Nora, because it's like, Y'all broke the generational cycle. Y'all yeah. went through all of these horrific things. And then you decided, I'm going to make a different MF choice. That's yeah. all. That's the only difference. We're not better than anybody. We're not claiming to be better than a shred of a human. <laughs> no, I really mean, I definitely all. not. I'm going to make a different choice. Instead of this, I'm going to do that. That's what life gives you. Every time you wake up and every time you go to sleep, you have a choice yeah. of what you're going to do next day. And that's yeah. who you are your choices yeah. and adults have choice and adults do consent. So yeah. we're trying to make it simple, stupid. So no, no one can play dumb. It's, it's against your best interest to play dumb. Cause you know what, if you didn't want to hurt your children, then wake up to the facts. That's what it's called. It's an yeah. inconvenient truth. Yes. You want the truth. You can't handle the MF truth, Tom Cruise yeah. and on down. Well, yeah, and, and, this, well, the and the other thing is, is like, you know, we're not about this rank and rating BS that we had to put up with in the Sea Org, okay? And all these guys who want to like glom onto it and just hang on to it for dear life, like, well, I did this and I was at gold and I was, I sat at the same table as David Miscavige, like nobody cares. Nobody cares. That's not what's important. It's not, it, what's important is the information that you are privy to that then can be used to address directly the problems. And once again, I just have to keep repeating it, get their 501c3 status revoked and ensure that the children that are trapped inside there now get released and no more children are forced into child slave labor and human trafficked across countries, across states into servitude for Scientology. It's like, it's that simple. And, and the last fact but not that, least, Nora, though, yeah. you know, it's like, it's all of those things are your run of a mill trafficking. We have mm -hmm, something mm -hmm. worse that took place. We were subjected to disgusting, extreme role plays that yeah. have no place on any child's Nothing. If you're under the age of 18, because I did get told it's like 18, you can join the military. Right. And when I think about my abuse, Nora, it's like, it's what happened to me before 18. After 18, I didn't get abused the same way. Believe you me, I had a lot better smarts. People didn't F with me mm -hmm. the same way. When I was 12, I was fair game. Mm -hmm. When I was 12, I believed every stupidity that was pitched to me. Right. It's that simple. Because but, you're 12. Oh, the trauma, the unthinkable stuff that's almost impossible to even think about is what happened to us when we had no power whatsoever, when we were just being thrown around and told and this and that. And it's like, and all of our parents did it to us. Like, this is like, your mom is not worse than mine. It's not worse than Biddy Miscavige. It's not worse than every last mother that with a full straight face got involved with these people. And yeah. the people that they should be having a problem with is the executives they made a deal with, not us. I have a problem with my 
with Sandra Hill and Pedro Hill. They're not even my parents. I'm sorry. You yeah. didn't do anything for me other than to place me in danger full time, all the time, every day with full impunity. I mean, Mitch Briscoe really brings up that word. It's like, y'all, you did it with impunity. It said it in the book and then you did it. You became yeah. a sadist. And who were you helping? Were you really saving a world? In what world are parents sadistically abusing kids and saving something? In a world where Alvaron Hubbard pitched them that, convicted, indicted, felon that he is and was. Yeah. And it's really just that simple. That's the fact. <clears throat> That's literally the truth. And like you said earlier, it's like the truth has to be confronted and it's not to hurt your mm -hmm. feelings. Stop making it about you already. And it's Stop like if you need about time, you. if you need time to go and work out your feelings, okay, Mitch, and other people who need to clearly get some therapy and work this out, that's okay. Okay. And this isn't to say that your story isn't valid. The, the, any pain that was caused to you, uh, during that time, uh, no one is erasing that. Okay. And this isn't to say Mitch is a bad guy. Like Mike Render's a bad guy. Claire's a bad guy. This isn't about who's good, who's bad. We're not like drawing a line in the sand about that. Okay. And, and we I don't have to, to make this. No, because I've been going no, to the to the but, to the court, and you know what? That's where it gets decided. Okay. Like so, what you think, yes. what I think is, couldn't be more irrelevant. It and doesn't it's just matter. A literal opinion. So we just allow allow to state our opinion. As exactly. We see things, and then they can get judged by a court of their peers. You did what? It says here in the law that you did this. Okay. Where's the evidence? Where's Boom. the PC folder? Where's the ethics folder? And where's all the video recording? Because before they all say to play dumb, oh, I had no idea. Well, you know what? You did. So that's your problem now. You had an idea. You were collecting the information. You were reading the mm -hmm. information. You were sharing the information. You couldn't be more implicated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's what it's called. I, just for me, it's just the more that I hear from people who were at int in positions of extreme privilege and power okay like mitch this is a position of extreme privilege um that then want to like you know left scientology for whatever reason he left we still undecided um and now want to like somehow just you know be like uh, trying to explain away all the things that they did for the church as if it was, you know, now they can look back on it with these, you know, uh, perfect glasses and just be like, Rose well, that color. was embarrassing. Rose colored. That's what it is. And, and, and just be like, oh, well, this was bad. And that's bad. It's like, okay, yes, that's step one. Okay. These are, these are not good things, but also like, let's, let's go back to these moments. Like the supposed, like David Miscavige would be laughing, right? If 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 he saw what we're all doing to Mike Render. Okay, let's think on that for a minute. Just just this imaginary scenario. All these times that David Miscavige told you what he was doing to whom about what? What information do you actually know? You might actually know something that's really fucking valuable and helpful that could actually take him down. Like in these lawsuits where he's fucking being subpoenaed and sued right now. Like you might actually be the fly on the wall that could give real information. But instead, you just want to be a fucking name dropper like a fucking bomber in World War II. Just carpet bombing everybody with all the important people in the room you were with. Like, And let's think bring it back through. to reality in actual legal adult terms. Because I, I did learn a thing or two today when I was in court. The judge was mm -hmm. talking about these people were working in a conspiracy. When you become part of a group mm -hmm. that is committing criminal activity... You're already a step way far into a place where you shouldn't be. And those adult choices that you're making are what's landing you there. The amount of mm -hmm. money that you donated while you saw kids being used to service adults. All parents knew. So it's again, it's like, it's not like, let's figure out who's this one and that one. It's like, you're all in a conspiracy. So it doesn't even matter who you thought you were. And I was so senior and so junior and whatever. You are you fit into that conspiracy. And there's a whole org board that kind of gives you who was wearing what. And it's like, not up to us. It's like, what does the org board say? Oh, look, you were here. Oh, you, look, you were here. Oh, look, you were a peon. And then it's called, did you donate your kids to the Sea Org? 
thank you. Did you give them their passport to some executive over here? Thank you. Get, get me the paperwork. Let me see it. <laughs> Let me see the PC folder so I can see what yeah. you were doing to that kid every yeah. single day. Everything is in writing. This couldn't be the most easiest criminal case in the whole wide world. Because yeah. again, who goes and keeps all these receipts? Nazis. Nazis, say, oh, let me get your, oh, what's your name? Let's write it down. Let's put it down. Let's do this. Let's do that. Let's really yeah. have all the records because it's all very legal. If we record it, it's all very legal. Look, it's all legal. Look, we have this book. We have this book. We have so many books of evidence on us as if keeping evidence on yourself is, it's, is what? No, it's ridiculous. And when you talk about the receipts of like the illegality just today, in the live that he did with Mark and the other guy, um, Alan Barton, Alan brought up a point. He was like, well, what happened with the whole SAG thing? Because there was a, there was like an issue with them. Um, they started like replacing all the Scientology actors with just non Scientologists because, you know, every once in a while, one of the big prominent Scientology actors would get declared and then they have to like reshoot the whole fucking movie again. Right. And it was mm -hmm. costing too much money to reshoot all these movies all the time. So, um, they just decided we're going to hire only non-Scientologists. So Tate Rupert's ex-wife, Shauna, it, 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 Mitch, Mitch had a problem with uh, talking about Alexandria Potter during the live. Like, oh, just, 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 you know, like, let's not mention her name. Right. I didn't post that clip, but I have it. I'll post it later. Um, you know, like because, you know, she's she's a named person of interest in the Gavin Potter, uh, David Miscavige rape trial. A uh, grape trial and whatever. Well, I already said it. Anyway, um, this is live. So <laughs> we're an hour in. We're an hour in. <laughs> we're an hour in. We'll be okay. But um, the uh, so he says that Shauna she worked in like the independent office of SAG at the time. So what she did was devise a contract a special contract for the church so that they would hire SAG actors and then use church members only as actors, not for speaking parts. And that's how they would like create this loophole to still use like Sea Org members in all the background shit. Right. Okay. So what he just explained, like he thinks he's being so clever and like, oh, we just handled that flap. We just handled it because Shauna, right. First of all, he threw Shauna under the bus and anybody who watches this, like Shauna could get investigated for that, for like insider shit inside SAG. And she was a super nice lady. She's not even in Scientology anymore. So apologies, Shauna. I love you. I'm sorry. But um, he just revealed that then they were using this loophole to pay actual actors money because they had to because they were SAG, right? They had to pay the guild prices. But to continue using slave labor for free for all the extra parts, well, and meanwhile, they're, they're having nothing. money to have influence over the actors because, oh, we did hire you. We did pay you really well. They're not pressed for money. They, they have tons of money to go throw as much as money as they can to SAG. So then, you yeah. know, they get all these special deals on the back end to really call up TikTok and be like, yeah, can you call, you know, cancel Jessica Palmades' account? Okay, bye. Who's doing that? Who's doing that for them? They're wielding power by being corrupt. Exactly. They cannot help themselves. They literally cannot help their literal selves. No. And this is, I mean, the, the whole thing that went down with, uh, you know, TikTok and everything else, um, this is crazy. Like Jessica independently had, you know, a, was it a million plus followers on mm -hmm. TikTok already before she even yeah. like ventured over to like, just cut, just, just what's going on over here you know and as i pointed out to most people and, and this is you know like i keep up with the trends i am gen x all the way but i keep up with the trends because i have four kids so i gotta know what's the what what right it, it, a lot of these tiktokers who are now youtubers you know <laughs> came over because it was a trend scientology was trending let's be honest and they were like well let me see what's up with that and they started you know filming and then, and I'm telling you right now, and this is my advice to fucking David Miscavige and everybody else, but he won't take my advice because, you know, he thinks I'm an SP. Um, 
if the if the Sebastian and all those other guys had come out and just done some fucking viral TikTok dance and just been like, yeah, what's up? And just like grooved with them and been like That's super not cool. reality though, Nora. They, but I'm just saying That's they would have just they're not no, I know, this is not but reality, they would have just though. moved on. The TikTokers would have been Look, like, these Jessica's guys are fine. Today, when Jessica's having conversations right now, she's talking about the child trafficking. Because I that's know. what it's called when you go there and you watch everything. All, and you're like, what? And then what? she know, what now, this? now Wait, she got that? interested. Wait, what's this? Wait, what's exactly. that? So well, see, all the of problem that is leads they to where we are them. today. I know. They fair game them because that's talking, what they do. I don't know. If, I don't know. If, am I, am I, are, are you no. hearing me? Because oh, I, I think we're, 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 okay, we're, we're just crisscrossing each other. <laughs> <laughs> we're just talking we, we're just we're just having a spirited you know talk <laughs> but th but they fair game them right and then that was it they weren't gonna let go do you know what i mean like well and it's beyond that because i think like they really actually do care nora they've they've spent the time yeah. now to have skin in the game for themselves they've seen things that they're not unseeing now you see what i'm saying yeah. and it's like yeah, it could have started as a trend. I couldn't agree with you more. And it got viral and it was a joke almost because it was so weird, the behavior that was being exhibited by, yeah. by these people. Like if they had nothing to hide and everything was great, but they were caught bringing minors to the thing. And then they get very pressed when they get told, no, that's not okay. Like that's weird. Why are you bringing mm -hmm. a 16-year-old girl and keeping her there for three hours? I had the kids come to the street to me and be like, oh yeah, they, they did. And there's a high school close by. So this is, imagine mm -hmm. how long they've been doing this. Imagine, because before that, oh, freedom of religion, the LAPD is all aware that, right. oh, they're doing their thing, you know, Christmas, we're such great people, you really need us here. And it's like, come on, you know, it's like, again, and it's like, you cannot tell adults to not get involved because you are allowed to get involved in whatever yeah. in the hell you want as an adult in this country. No one is going to question that. No, and you and I have both said that independently over and over and over again. If two or more consenting adults want to pick up any of the tomes that Elrond, you know, uh, birthed and practice that on each other in the privacy of their own home, this is America. Congratulations, you may do that. But involving your children or profiting from that or enslaving people to do that, zero. Zero stars that that cannot happen, and it cannot be a former religion where you are then playing the you know shell game with humans and uh, hiding money with properties and all this other stuff that they're doing. I mean, it's just there's so many things in this, like you've mentioned the hotels and all these things that no other religion is doing. Not even Mormons who have more money than Scientology, they just erect those gigantic spirally places that they go into and it's secrets you know but like you know it, it, it they're not running hotels where they're so trapping like no one else and they were so proud of that that was no. actually their selling point to the people oh, look at all the other idiots that have religion like we have technology yeah. they're such idiots praying to god that's so stupid like what you think you're gonna get somewhere by praying you you need the technology and it's that level of delusional Whatever yeah. in the hell you could call that. It's like cognitive dissonance galore. And it's like, yeah. it's extremely dangerous. It's not, it, and again, had they been carding people at the door, Nora, then if you and I would have been carded and everyone else was 21 and up, we, it sucked. We you wouldn't have what? been let in. Waste my whole life yapping about it. I might go to therapy and I might get over it. And if there was no crimes yeah. committed, then it just gets written off as like, oh, I used to get degraded and locked up nine hours against my will and it got me off for three years and then i was like oh you know what i'm gonna just try something else that's available for them in what world were underage kids implicated when everyone had the books when everyone had the drills when everyone had access to see it all in the course rooms the grooming salons where all of this where you and i were used as kids it's like why would you think that this was not a good place for kids if literal kids are the ones that are teaching the courses, grooming the courses, clearing the words, whatever in the hell, like as if we were not being used to lure more minors into the hotel and into danger because they're like, oh, look, there's Serge and everybody says he's great. Let me go take a course myself. I was influenced because my grandmother was a groomer 
a course supervisor, and then tons of other kids that I knew that everybody went, oh my God, they're doing the course. Oh my God, they're so special, so great. And I, that's how they implicated us. And that's disgusting. Mm -hmm. That is disgusting. That is abominable because they all yeah. saw the course and no one saw a single red shred of red flag and be like, maybe not the kids. You know what? Maybe we all love it here. Uh, maybe just not the kids. Maybe yeah. they just should consent whenever they're ready. I mean, while we were used to, so people could pay. So John Travolta could go, oh, I want a little bit of time with Nora here. Let me debit four grand on my card. And now right. Nora owes me to goo goo gaga me through these books because I really want her patience and her knowledge. And you were there like 18, 19, just like, you know, trying to save a world. And it's like, now it's like, okay, but you were being manipulated in an unthinkable way. Like, yeah. and that's why we're advocating for that. Because again, it's like, yeah. I, I care that all of our innocence was exploited in horrific, disgusting ways. I don't care about anyone else. I don't care about any of the gossip. I don't care about any of the other adult problems. They can go sort that out for their damn selves. Yeah. Um, I do want to address a couple, two, two things, Serge. So there's a lot of super chats. I want to, I want to pull those up. Also, Mitch has been yelling in the chat. He wants to join us here on this live to defend himself. Now, I, Mitch, I want to just talk to you here for a moment. For realsies, not an excuse to not bring you on the live. I, I do have a bedtime. I get up every day before the crack of dawn for, for my work. So I, I don't have time to have an elongated, like one-on-one -on -one discussion with you. Um, we don't you want the post discussions, it. Mitch. We're, but, we're, but, we're way but beyond also, the discussion like, at you, this you point. Posted, you posted your thing on your community page. I will go look at that in, in you know, in earnest. And I will, you know, I, I will go check that out. But, you know, you, you open this door. And it's time for you to, you know, a lot of people have suggested it. Um, maybe just listen. Maybe just take a moment to listen to this feedback, okay? Like, just pretend we're like your corporate bosses for a second. And we're giving you some feedback. And you just need to, like, listen and absorb the feedback. And then just don't have a clap back. That's, that's my recommendation at this moment is to just, like, really take it in. Because Go and you're do not something. do something not after the feedback. Do whatever you think yeah. it's necessary. Whatever you yeah. think. We don't have anything else to say. Like literally, mm -hmm. just go and do it. Everyone can go and do it. Like yapping. We don't need more yeah. yapping. We're done. Like, we're, I, we're not it, our feelings are in hurt. Believe you me, Mitch. Believe you me, you're the last of our problem. We have a much bigger we're, problem than you. No. Literally. We're 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 in action mode right now. Like we're we're here to support the, you know, surges at the court every day right now focusing on all of these lawsuits that are supremely important. This is like unbelievable. We've got Leah's lawsuit. We've got the Gavin Potter lawsuit. We've got, remind me all the lawsuits. I'm forgetting all of them, Serge. Don't let well, me forget no, and, and it was today was the Bixler lawsuit. The Bixler, the Bixler lawsuit. For, for then, fair gaming. Which there's like, there's like five lawsuits right now. And then Aaron's going on Friday for, for the assault uh, follow-up, correct? Mm -hmm. But there's, there's, uh, the Bixler lawsuit, Leah's lawsuit, uh, the the Potter lawsuit, and there's is there one more that I'm leaving off? No. Nope, that's it. Okay, mm -hmm. good. I got them all. All right, hooray. So this is this is the focus. We need to put our attention there to make sure the the motion, the the momentum is towards these lawsuits, and the momentum keeps going towards the protests that are actively happening and supporting the people who are protesting every night and putting the attention and the energy towards that because that is the most important thing. That this is where the energy and everything needs to go. All right, super chats. Here we go. From uh, Chayoko B. Thank you for your super sticker. Thank you so much. From Annie Hummingbird, also a super sticker. Thank you. Joe Cooter. I, I love everything about this. No one has to do anything to destroy Scientology. It will inevitably run itself into the ground. Everything that is being done just makes it happen faster. SBTV is primarily about healing the damage. Yes. We, we also well do a said. We also do a lot of healing here, Joe. Thank you for that. Yeah. Um, Dr. Who Heather, uh, why does he know someone applied for help from the Aftermath Foundation? So unethical. Mm -hmm. 
these are, um, you know, this is a very good question. Uh, Chrissy Newton, I truly hope that people can get the help they need and stop seeing people as they have higher a hierarchy that they have gotten used to. Y'all are capable of amazing things and hope you all find peace. Thank you very much for that. Uh, Chrissy appreciate uh, Mitch. Um, I, I did put this comment in here. I helped set up the test center. I had a responsibility to call bullshit on it. I don't know exactly what this means, Mitch. Um, I also helped set up the test center when I was on the RPF. So again, um, we're not the same. I don't know what it means by you help set up the test center, like you you designed some displays or something. I literally stuccoed the outside of that building, did the electrical, did like grunt work that I was not paid for, uh, that was literal backbreaking work. So you and I both worked on the same material building that now houses slaves that are trying to get more slaves into a cult. Who cares? I don't Literally. know what bullshit you were calling out, but if it wasn't telling people, don't go in there, it's a cult. You just, I, I left that cult and it took me 30 years, but I finally woke up. You shouldn't go in there. Listen to this guy, Serge, who's talking about what happened to him as a kid. He's, he's telling the truth. That should be the only words out of your mouth. All right. Paralyzed, paralyzed. Uh, all the rank stuff is nauseating. High level this, continental that, it's all BS. Yes, because it's all stolen valor. And it's shameful. And once again, I apologize almost every stream for this. I apologize to every uh, current and former member of our armed forces for all of that stolen valor that I wore uh, in the costumes. Uh, apologies. And thank you all for your service, for your actual service. Uh, Vanessa Lee, powerful tag team to expose and teach without fear. Boom. Yes, Serge and I. D double the gay double the the superpowers uh chrissy newton says i want to understand what you understood was saving the planet oh honey this is serge and i will have to do a whole other life it's it's kind of actually like a really big topic we could we could do that because it's it's a very big pull on how they get you into the c organization on saving the planet and the in the guilt that they put on the kids especially and this is, um, it, we should actually talk about it from the kid viewpoint on on why the saving the planet and everything else, because it is, um, it's dangerous. Mm -hmm. It's really it's dangerous. It's unthinkable abuse of kids, mm -hmm. you know, it's like they, mm -hmm. they don't even deserve to be told that there's a world to save. They need to be protected so that they can find themselves, not be burdened by these disgusting adult problems that should not even be hitting their lines like they used to tell us in there. Right. <laughs> Uh, Chris Walaski, keep going, Nora. This is so needed. And as an Australian, Miriam Francis's story hits extra hard. Hope she gets justice out here or in the U.S. Uh, us too. Uh, we are. Uh, I'm a huge fan of Miriam, and uh, I am rooting for her 100. Uh, percent The one and only again. Thank you again. Let Mitch defend himself by letting him join. Um, I think we we address that. But that's not going to happen tonight. But thank you for the super chat. Um, Lunar 35, uh, did you see the message where Mitch says he has a DA pack on surge from the secret firsthand knowledge? Despicable third post on Maryland's computing tab. Yeah. yeah. So like now revealing wants to come up and really talk. And it's like, it's all, he, he speaks from every last red side of his mouth. And that's why it's like, you know what? We don't even care what in the hell you have to say. Literally. But also like, why say something like that? Why be like, well, you know, I have a, I have a secret DA pack. Like, why would you even no, carry no, that and, around? And stupid ass secret DA pack. Let's just dispel it all for everybody. I made $1.1 million because Bob Duggan paid me $35,000 to audit his kids, of which I didn't audit. I hired Tyler Bosserman to audit kids and put him on the own time process, you would know what the own time process is. It's the only yes. probably the only process you should ever do with a child. You just go, this is the session. Let's do whatever in the hell you want. Yeah. So it was glorified chi like, like child babysitting. Okay. He did pay me $500 <laughs> an hour. This is a billionaire that paid me $500 an hour for me to set that up. Well, wouldn't you know that eight months later, I got fired from that job because I was blamed for not doing other more CCA because you weren't, weren't, they, you uh, weren't, weren't sex checking the kids and all this other shit. Yeah. Why are they doing the CCA? Okay. Well, yeah. that's 
that's Mitch Brisker's little dead agent pack. Information that I shared with him openly because at first he came and love bombed me. Oh, you're so great. Oh, you're so wonderful. Oh, I really want to help. And then I smelled a rat that he didn't want to help anybody. And he was like every one of these people that were there for decades committing crimes against children as if mm -hmm. Mitch Brisker didn't groom the films that were used to normalize making us these so-called auditors of adults. So you go deal with that, Mitch Brisco. Let, let me just say something. Made it, made all the minors think that, oh, we yeah. did see a film and it was really fun. And okay, so we just do this with adult now. And it's, uh, you're the one that did use of adult in session. You're the one that did confessional TRs. So you're a groomer from hell. Your work could be more disgusting. So stop trying um, to insert yourself in the conversation if you're not going to come in with a shred of honesty because we just have no bandwidth for that anymore. We're not kids anymore. We're adults. Yeah. We're not going to take this shit. And by the way, use of a doll in auditing, uh, that one is the one where Danny Masterson in the film essays another doll like it was scripted for him to do that. And he did that Mitch. in real life then, Nora. No, this the, is what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, with, is that literally he played he her. He, that's right. He and, played and where, a doll. Were you not there when that happened? Mitch another Mitch doll. Her? And then Mitch directed him in how to properly do that. And then, surprise, surprise, Danny Masterson turns into a monster leader after he's been literally taught how to do this. Well, and surprise, surprise, he did this here things. too. He did this here in real life. That was one of his first times that he did it. Yeah. Robin Alessandrini was sent across state lines to Florida. Mitch Brisker, wasn't this your set? Didn't this happen yeah. under your watch? So you couldn't be more implicated in whatever in the hell happened with Danny Masterson, yeah. right? Because that's what this is giving right about now. So it's it, it's really, it, you know, it, we, we have the receipts, Mitch. And also, Serge has been open about this. This isn't like some secret. It's not some... I am this Disgusted by all of it, Mitch Briscoe. Not like you. Secret. I'm not here sitting here glorifying anything that I did as a child. So, yes, no. thank you very much. Where the hell is you repudiating anything you did? Why the hell do you have to get told what in the hell you did? You're a grown ass man. Have you no yeah. shame? Yeah. No. It's we we're we're over that. So the the yeah. No, thank you. Um Thank you for your super chat. AK Weather. Love, love the focus. Perfect timing. Love the focus. We do love the focus. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Spring. Um, oh my God. Agatha Cological. Is that? Oh my goodness. Did I say that right? That's got to be Greek. Narcissists and psychopaths rise to the top of any organization, and it's because they're willing to do things that other people won't. Just saying. That's some, that's some facts. Um, Tampa B Man. Uh, don't stop thinking about tomorrow. Don't stop. It'll soon be here. This is very true. Thank you for that journey uh, lyric. Um, Fancy Nancy, thank you for your super sticker. Julia O'Connell. Julia O'Connell, uh, just for the victims. Thank you so much. Thank you. And uh, Jessica Vincent. Preach it, Serge. That's right. Thank, thank you for guys. your super sticker. We really appreciate the support. I mean, but, it's the fact that yeah. we have this community supporting us that is, is bringing healing and hope. So thank you for so holding much. space. Thank you for holding space. That's all that any survivor could ever ask. So thank you. Thank you, guys. Listen, I love all of you guys. I'm so excited. A week from Friday, I'm going to be in Los Angeles. I get to finally, I haven't seen, you know what I found the other day? I have to find what? it. I found, where did it go? Did you find before a photo? Get, I did, I did, I did, I did. Where did it go? Where did it go? I found it on my phone and I was like, what? And then I was thinking, how am I going to, how am I going to use this somehow? And I have to, now I have to quickly find it, but it was the photo. Let me find it. Of the famous oh, Malibu right. lunch. Yes. It was the I photo. Of the, what's that? Yeah, I remember taking it, but I, I didn't have it on my phone. Was it in my... Let's see here. Do, 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 do. Why was I... I think I was, like, looking through selfies, and it came up. And you know how, like, Apple categorizes all these things in, like, a weird way? Mm-hmm. And then, and then you're like, why, are, why is that in this folder? 
thanks apple like that's weird um but i saw this picture and i was like oh my god look at us we're just babies it's not that long ago but <laughs> but it does seem like forever ago doesn't it like 2017 i mean that's before or it was 2013 it was like time before goes the by pandemic. So slowly. Just to bring up another Madonna lyric, time goes by so slowly. <laughs> right, right. It's, Where it's are you? Slowly take up. Right. Where did you go? Do, 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 do. No, it's before that. That I know. It's going to be. It should be like right there. Thank you, Summer. Oh, thank you, Summer. I'm so disappointed. I know down <laughs> downtown Abby. I love your name, downtown Abby. <laughs> literally, li literally, Liz, Lisa. Now they're literally love it. You you inspired that. You inspired that. Well, you know what? We're we're all allowed to be inspired. Thank right, you, Dawn. Because Thank yeah. you for sending love for us. We really do appreciate it. Rabbit. Is Rabbit in the house? Thank you, Rabbit. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us, Rabbit. Really appreciate it. Oh, is Rabbit here too? Yeah. It's oh a party. God. It's a party, party, party. It's a it's a um it's a Surgeon Nora party. I'm gonna find this photo and I'm gonna I'm gonna have to post it because I had it and I don't know why I didn't. I don't know what I did with it. That's so dumb. And now it's like disappeared, like the chupacabra. Oh, here's another super chat. And Casillas, can we have a big palate cleanser from Blah Blah Man and just send love in honor of Serge, Nora, Marilyn, and all the kids who need help? Thank you, Anne. Beautiful, beautiful, wonderful. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes, for sure. Thank you, Anne. <laughs> and there's more. Uh, Serge and Nora, you are just so brave. Love you from DNV 1983. And you, uh, from Marilyn, hi, Marilyn, Nora and Serge, thank you for your support and friendship. I'm here for you as well. Never shut. We know this, Marilyn. We know this. And we love you. No more cover-ups. You can shut us up. That's our literal, <laughs> our literal message. No more cover-ups. Y'all can shut us up. Right? Just, like, not, oh, my God. We're not going to shut up. Like, it's, we needed people to not be shutting up when we were there. So we have to be the change we want to see. And, you know, hopefully people can get inspired to do the right thing because I think all those under the radar people can learn that you were screwed over in unthinkable ways. And there's a lot of betrayal trauma that you have to get over, including you, Mitch Brisker. So it goes from the top on down. Elvin Hubbard betrayed every last shred of protege that got exposed to the disgusting rhetoric he wrote. And it's that's that's the Greek tragedy right there. The tragedy is that no one was left unscathed. That everybody who Elwin Hubbard stuck his fangs on literally has a ton of recovery to do for themselves in unthinkable ways. I don't wish what happened to my parents, the choices they made, the scam that they were put through on my literal worst enemy. I don't wish it on them. But the only way to change it is for them to actually step up and face the music of their choices. Because otherwise, what message is that sending to all the parents that are now implicating their kids, that are exposing their kids to this with full knowing? You know, so that's why all the parents are being called out. And y'all really should get together and organize your own protest and get yourselves on your own message and do the right thing. Like, that's what everybody wants to see. Yes. And let me see if I can share this. Let me see if it'll let me do it. Yeah, that's why I was trying to buy you time while you were doing that. Let me see. I sent you the thing. Let's see if it'll do it. Just wanna. Thank you, M71. Oh! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God! You're like that's like I like. Can you can oh you see that? Oh my God! Yes. Look at us. Oh. Look at, look at that. 
Look how cute we are. Oh, let me take a picture of a picture. I mean, you'll send it I to send me. It to I, I send it to you. I send it to you. I send it to you. See, look at it. Look how tall. I'm so short. And there's <laughs> you and Aaron. See? And you, look, look how beautiful you are. That was baby gay me just being like, I'm trying this out. I think literally, I can do it. But no, you weren't even literally out there, right? I was like, I had just like Cameron and I were separated. And I hadn't gone out on a date. I hadn't like even like like nothing, like just okay, okay. literal nothing. Like, mm -mm. Oh, that's the wrong screen. That was when I made my graphic. <laughs> Look at me oh. using Canva, guys. I'm a professional. <laughs> wrong, wrong one. <laughs> Let me stop sharing that so we're not in the matrix. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my god! Of course. But no, I'm glad you shared that because you know what? It's yeah. it's good to see um it's good to see the receipt. You know what I mean? It's good to see the yeah. receipt that we've been looking for answers, that we've been trying to connect the dots. And you know, we're so glad that all of you are here to to witness our plight because it's you know, it's it's very important that um that we have the support and that we show other survivors that they will be supported and that what happened to them they didn't deserve yeah for sure for sure absolutely we got a couple more um super chats and then we're gonna call it a night here thank you mark uh you rock and <laughs> we, we always keep it real me and serge uh electric boogaloo hey thank you for tuning in tonight thank you for your super chat literally loves love you both we love you back and shout out to all agents uh unalive or alive Okay. I don't know what that <laughs> I guess it's like dead agents because, you know, the oh, whole right, buzzword is being dead agents. You know what I mean? It's like now we're being dead agents. Now we're being this. Now we're being that. Now we're being told fleas. Right. Now we're being told flying monkeys. I mean, we're just. Every, every week grabbing... it's something new. Every... Anything I else but the truth. It's like, when are you going to stop? Going for insults and actually going for the truth. Write your overs and your withholds. Time, place, form, and event. Every oh. crime you committed inside of the hotel. Turn that into an affidavit and then go to the FBI Crimes Against Children unit and be like, hi, let me make a deal. I feel really bad about what I did right here. I will tell you everything you need to know. Everything I did under oath. You need me? I'll testify. Cut me a deal. That's how actual justice works. Yeah. 100%. 100%. All right, That's my friend. Ethics actually work. Ethics that are not administered inside of a hotel. Yeah. I mean, you just have to, it, truth will out, number one, it will always come out. And if you're on the side of truth, even if you share some guilt in that truth, being on the side of it will help you. It will help set you free. That's how it helps yes. you set, set you free. Yes. You got to, you got to say it. You got to, you got to be on the right side of it. And you've got to embrace um, taking responsibility for your part in it, even the ugly parts, not just the fun, not just the the shiny parts. You got to embrace all of it. Yes. All right, guys, we will have more. We always have more. We're, we always have more. Um, I love all of you and we will see you on the flippity dippity. All right. Ciao, ciao. I'll talk to you guys next time. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if it works. No, not for me. Oh, no, there you go, Serge. Ah!